Right, let's take a look at electrical connectors. Blue and red are the most common that you'll see. Sometimes you'll see these yellow ones. It's the size. These, these are a lot bigger than the blue. And again, I'll find a red one. The red one, it's the cable size basically. So if you've got a big fat cable, chances are it's the yellow one you'll need. You don't see them that often. And like I say, blue and red are the two colors you normally see. And uh, of that, six mil spades or bullet connectors. They're quite common on speaker cables where you'll see the male and the female version. Like that. So how do we join them together without them coming apart? There's a couple of ways. You'll see this quite a lot. These are okay. I mean, I can strip the cable with these. You can crimp them with this side, yellow, blue, red, indicating the different size connectors. The problem with these is, is you can overcook it. You can crush these down so much that you damage the connector. Best way, set of ratchet crimpers. These will only take it down so far. So it's a, it's a fairly repetitive and consistent crimp. Um, but obviously if you've only got one, one wire to crimp, you're not gonna go out and buy a set of these. So first up, you've got to strip the cable. I'm going to show you three ways of doing this. This is where sparkies, you'll see a lot of electricians do this on household cables, but they're, they're not multi-core, so you've got to be a little bit careful with this. And the likelihood is you're going to cut off more than you need. What you're trying to avoid doing is cutting the copper. So when you're stripping it, you don't want to slice that copper or damage it, because then you, you potentially make a weak connection. You've got little bits that can come out and you're reducing the size of that core, which is, uh, or the actual copper, which is what you don't want. So you'll have to trim that down. It's for our electrical connectors. We don't need too much st sticking through. Next way, let's go back to this tool. At the front, there's all different sizes for different size cables. So you just select the one you need. You can be a bit more precise with these ones. Pull it through, and again, trim the cable down to where you need it. Well, my way I normally do it, use a set of these. It's quicker, it's a lot easier. You can select the size you want, pull it off, it's done. And if you want to get a nicer twist, don't pull the end off. Just get it where it's a little way up from the end, and you can use that to twist your cable. It's really good on really fine wires where they sort of slip between your fingers, alarm wires especially. We've stripped our ends, now we're looking at terminal selection. Looking at the blue and the red, difference in size once we pop that in. See it flaps around not very snug fit so when we go to crimp that there'll be a lot of excess of squish at the sides so always try and get the one that's just big enough just big enough to go through we don't need much more sticking through than that so then if we if we go to these I'll show you the select the red and then you crimp crimp the front and crimp the back because what you're doing is you're crimping the copper and you're crimping, crimping the outer casing you can see it's put a little bit of a bend in that and if you go too mad you can crush it here and it will squelch out and also you can go not enough and then you can pull the cable out like that you see i'll show you the difference using the same crimpers makes again we just put our connector in select the red boss
pop it in and this is going to do two things at once. It's going to crush both sides or crimp both sides and more importantly I can't pull it off. It's just enough and no more. So if you need to make a connection, for instance, a battery terminal, you need this to ideally be waterproof. So how do you do that if you haven't got any heat shrink connector terminals? Well, there's two stages for this. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna trim this cable down because it's a bit too long. We don't need it that long. It'll, um, it'll prevent the nut or whatever we're screwing that ring terminal onto from sitting nice, nice and flush. So give that a twist, pop the cable in, and then we're just going to crimp it as normal. So we take our crimps, crimp that. Now that's a nice solid connection. You could use that, but if we need this to be waterproof, knowing that copper loves a bit of moisture and likes to corrode, do two more stages to make this a better job. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to solder the copper to the actual terminal. So we'll put a bit of we'll tin soldering iron and get this hot run some solder in there and what this is doing is waterproofing the actual core of the copper bit now the next step is make sure that you put your heat shrink on before you put this connector on obviously we'll slide that up and then we're going to shrink this down but pay particular attention to this bit here because obviously once this starts shrinking it will wrap itself quite tight across this edge and it can split it and then once you've got to split the whole thing you have to do it again so We'll shrink that down now. Use a heat gun. You can use the tip of a soldering iron, um, but don't be tempted to use a lighter. That can make a horrible mess. Now ideally this would be self-adhesive heat shrink because then what that does, the glue inside melts, squeezes out and forms another waterproof seal. What you can do is if you think this is going to be a little bit too slack, you can put a smaller size on first and shrink them both down together and that will take up any slack. But that gives you a much nicer waterproof or water resistant connection. Hope you enjoyed this one, hope it's useful to you. Like and subscribe. On to the next one.